Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101, and oh my God, it's freaking cold. I can deal with cold, cold's fine, but this wind, that sucks. But I gotta be out here, I gotta tell you about something. So if you're watching this video, that means that the JX5 Vengeful One is once again available. They're up for sale at DLT Trading and Knives Ship Free, so please use the links that are in the description box below for that because that'll help support the channel. This time we've got 300 of them in this run. We lost about 50 of them last time. Uh, they went missing in transit, the heat treated blanks, so we only had 200 to sell. So this time we've got 300 of them. They should last a little bit longer, so if you can't get one right this second, that'll probably be okay because everybody just blew all their money on dark timber <laughs> in the last week or so. Plus, everybody's shopping for Christmas. But wives, wives, you really want to impress your husband or your boyfriend for Christmas? Tell you what, base price on these is only 250 bucks for like stock my car, like green, black, that sort of thing. That sounds like a lot of money. It ain't. Not for this much CPM 3V. It's actually really, really good price for that. This knife, I would have to say, first of all, I do not intend on designing any more multi-purpose choppers like this because I don't think that I can outdo this. I just don't. This is the evolution of the original knife, which was Jess X. There aren't as many people out there that have reviewed it because, you know, I don't get cases of them to hand out like beads at Mardi Gras like I did with Jess X, but there are some and there are a few that are being passed around the review circuit. That's why I'm going to use some of their clips. I'm kind of sketchy about reviewing my own stuff anymore. This one, I don't need to. You don't have to take a single word from me. You can say I'm full of crap or whatnot, but there's 200 JX5 owners out there. All you got to do is ask any one of them. They ain't getting a dime from it. Ask them what they think about it. Everybody, it does what it's supposed to do. Everybody loves it. So between this and the Jessmic, those are definitely like my best two designs so far. And I'm extremely happy with this. And hey, all you guys that didn't get your hands on a Dark Timber, like an OG Grizzly, and you're all upset, got to consider, Pete helped me clean up the design on this. So, it's got a little bit of Kohler DNA in it. You know, I, can, I can visualize in my head, uh, but actually drawing isn't my strong. I can get close, but you know, sometimes you gotta have somebody better clean it up for you. So, it does have a little bit of uh, Pete Kohler DNA in it. Not that kind of DNA, just keep your heads out of the gutter. But anyway, yeah, I'm happy. With Jess X being the way that it was so wonky with the shape, I pretty much had to wear it like a Baldrick style sheath. But with the Vengeful One, I can actually wear this on my belt or a secondary belt on my side and it's not too much. I wouldn't go much bigger than this, but yeah, I like it on my belt more than I like using like a Baldrick type carry or anything like that. So there are currently, that I know of, three Kydexers that make aftermarket sheaths for the JX-5. I've only got one of them so far, and that's this one. And this is Gary from C2G Fab. Doug from Yellowhawk also makes them, and Atlas Sheaths uh, that did that really cool SXB sheath, uh, he also makes them. He's actually gonna be making me a JX-5 sheath here pretty soon because his are different in that there's no three-quarter open side they just go in and out like a regular kydex knife sheet so I wanted to get one of those as well other than that uh, yeah let's go ahead and quit talking here and cut to some other people doing the reviews and I'll keep sharing as the new reviews come in I'm not sure who gets it after uh, wingman 115 who did the last one but somebody will 
So that's that. The links are in the description box below to uh, Knife Ship Free and DLT. So let's go ahead and watch some other people's footage of the JX5 Vengeful One. My friends, it's Tack. Back with another blade. Today we got the Bark River JX5. Check the initial sharpness. We use that forward spot to choke up. See how controllable it is. Now I'm sure this thing's nasty freaking sharp. And this is untouched by Chris. This came right out of the box factory. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow, that's actually, damn. I'll we'll try it way down here. Yeah, look how that just bites. You can just pretty much just push it right freaking through it almost. So the sharpness is definitely awesome. I love convex grind, man. They're always freaking nasty sharp, it seems like. Do a little bit more. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, this is, for me anyways, I know everybody's got different preferences, but for a survival knife, this is one of the best steels. I don't know if I showed this. CPM 3V tool steel, love this shit, man. Every knife I've ever used, I don't know, it's just, it's awesome. It's strong as hell, it holds a good edge. This is a white pine log that fell. Uh, it is a little dead. This is about, hmm, about 10 inch diameter, so it's pretty big. Let's see what kind of crevasse we can make in this. Alright, hey, that's not bad at all. Let's do a close-up of the destruction. Check that out. That actually did really freaking good. Now, I can't tell you what these are. I can't remember which knives, but there's some... These were all big blades. So, man, that actually did really good. One of the best on the tree. The only thing I tested here that was better was, oh, God, what was that zombie tool? Reaver Cleaver. Check this out. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing that has done more damage on this log. So yeah, the chopping power is definitely there. Next, we're gonna do a couple downward chops. See if we can just cleave this in half. This thing has some freaking power and mass. Uh, it's gotta be able to do this, right? Oops, I only took off a little piece, but let's try it again. Come on, Tack, work on that name. Okay, not bad. Swing a little bit harder this time. Oh, there you go. We'll do one more piece, a little bit bigger. I like doing some cleavage. I freaking love cleavage. Just talking about cleavage. I love cleavage. Let's try it again. Oh, yeah, it definitely has the power. And that convex grind does a really good job of just opening it up. Let's try batoning this thing. Okay, so we got a decent sized piece. This is about the size you'd put in your fireplace at home. It's a hardwood, red maple. Let's see if we can baton this. I'm sure it will. Boy, that's a decent sized piece and you have more than enough blade. You know what I'm saying? Which is always cool. Oh, I love batoning a two, three hundred dollar knife. <laughs> wow, it's sinking right in. Not much effort. Ah, it's funny, where I batoned it, I actually put it in the log down there. But there you go. So one to 10, what would I give this thing? Like I said, it seemed like it did everything pretty darn good. One to 10, I'd probably give this an eight and a half. So good job, Chris. This one came out a lot better than the last one. Just saying, not this one. <laughs> it did though, I, I like this one a lot better. This thing is pretty cool. It's always good to see my people. And until the next time we meet. What's going on guys, Black Scout Survival. Before we get into today's video, go ahead and go down there and hit that thumbs up if you're one of those awesome people. If you're one of those guys that wakes up in the morning and looks yourself in the mirror every day and hates what you see, click that thumbs down. 
It really excels at chopping, chops really well. That convex edge, you know, really sinks in uh, really well. Um, one pound, eight ounces, you know, pretty heavy knife. But if you're looking at other tools that you would carry, you may only carry one knife uh, versus carrying an ax and all this other kind of stuff. And this would, you know, probably fit the bill for that. You know, a lot of indigenous people all over the world use large knives and that's all they, they carry with them. They don't use small knives. So, um, Anyhow, let me show you real quick, see if that spine sparks, and it does. So, anyhow, I like the knife. I think he, uh, he did a good job with that, and it's definitely a good one-tool pack knife. You know, throw it in your pack, and you can get a lot done with it. So, anyhow, check it out in the link below, and uh, thanks for watching Black Scout Survival. Bye. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Bark River Boom! Vengeful one. I gotta hold this bad boy with two hands. It's just a huge honking blade. Now, this is a Chris Tanner design. And I uh, had a chance to talk with Chris a while back, and um, Chris goes, hey, you wanna do a review on this blade? I said, hell yeah, dude. I've been wanting to get my hands on this knife for a while now. Now, the big sweep on this blade gives it enough forward weight forward that I'm telling you right now it's just just an ease to chop with and I'm using this minimal effort here we'll get my hand in there so you can see just look just minimal I'm not going too crazy with energy at all We're gonna take it over to a tree stump here real quick. But that gives you a little indication how well the big belly on this blade works for chopping. Well, since the Vengeful One is a chopper, we already know it can baton. I just know. I'm just gonna to try to split this bad boy. This is about a three and a half inch, just twisted limb. We're gonna give it a go. Wow, <laughs> not bad. Taking out my camera one more time, just cause it's so fun. Not bad. I wanna see the edge retention after I chop through this coconut. So let's get her started. Not bad, not bad. Look at that. Now it's like Gilligan's Island. We have a cup we can drink out of. It's almost like a severed head right there. Everybody's probably gonna wonder if a big knife can do fine motor skill tasks. So I chose a small piece of wood and we're gonna see if we can do some uh, small feathering with this. Tell you what, this knife is sharp, and I didn't do any touch ups to this knife when it came. Now, this knife has been reviewed by a couple different people. I don't know if they've touched up the edge, but let me tell you what, I'm impressed. Let's get up close so you can see real quick. Just some nice little feathers with this big blade. Now for some final thoughts on the Bark River Vengeful One. Bolo style blade. Chris, you designed a badass mamba jamba, dude. This bad boy, she's heavy, I ain't gonna lie. But it's forward weight, so when I'm chopping, it just, the weight distribution on this Tanner, you did an awesome job. And the way Bark River did the bloodlines in there, took out just enough meat out of that CPM 3V steel. I just love that steel, that's a super steel. I've gotten to play around with it a little bit before 
and uh, just edge retention just stays crazy sharp. As you saw when I did that um, small little, I'm so excited I can't even think, when I did the little feather stick with it. So big knives, contrary to popular beliefs, I'm gonna get up close here real quick, public service announcement. Big knives can do small tasks, okay? Just letting you know, just letting you know. Because I get that all the time. People go, dude, why you gotta have a big knife, dude? Well, I'll tell you what, a big knife can do small tasks, but I'm sorry, a small knife can do big tasks. What would you use this blade for? Well, primarily, this bad boy is a chopper. If you're out somewhere where you gotta clear some real estate, this is gonna do the trick. Now, let's talk a little bit about this. I just love this bolo style. The tip on here is just outstanding. And you saw when I did the tip test, which I don't advocate doing that at all. I do it on these knife reviews just to show you folks the durability of the blade. So if you break your knife, don't say, well, John did it in his video, so I'm gonna, no, no, no. Don't blame this guy, because I'm telling you, don't do it with your knife. I just wanted you to see it, just to know the durability of this knife. And I mean, let me get out of the frame here a little bit and hold it. Look at that, just beautiful. Now, let's talk about the scales on here. Scales on here are just black canvas micarta, but they're polished and I'm sorry, but they did an outstanding job. The quality, I can't catch a fingernail on that. And I test a lot of nice folks. I see a lot of stuff come through the channel and there's a lot of stuff that I'm sorry I don't test that I tell the company, I'm sorry, I can't review that. I'm just not gonna show it. And you saw that I chopped and there's just enough up sweep on this handle. I did a three finger hold with the pinky on the back just to get the pendulum motion, and it just worked outstanding. A couple different hand positions on here. You can choke up really close. That's when I did that fine work with a feather stick right in the middle where the Coke bottle handle is. Fits really well in my medium sized hand because there's a lot of real estate at the business end of this. And then what I call that backseat grip. Tanner. I think you outdid yourself on this one. Uh, you hit a home run, dude. In the big knife department, I think this is gonna be a freaking Hall of Famer on the channel. And Bark River, what can I say? Bark River quality. Yeah, this knife is over 200 bucks, but I'll tell you what, this right here for CPM 3V steel, I mean, that, that is a deal for this blade. Awesome blade. I don't mind pulling the trigger on something with this quality. And there's just a lot of steel in this knife. So if you want a knife that is gonna chop, that is just gonna slice, dice, just gonna go crazy town, what can I say? What can I say? I'd mic drop it, but I don't wanna drop his knife on the ground. So, uh, Five stars, five stars on the channel. Don't go away, see what I think of this knife. Let's test her out on some iron wood. Oh, dang. Yep, that uh, saber grind really helps with the batoning. Yeah, look at that easy. Iron wood has no chance. Okay, I'm not taking it easy on this knife. Straight up iron wood twice. That fell. Okay, just this one piece. <laughs> oh, she, oh, she loves it. 
Look at that. Yep, no problem. Beast. When I was talking to Chris about using this knife and making a video and reviewing it, I said, I'm going to gut a fish. And he said, good luck. Well, I take that as a challenge. I caught a fish. It's not the biggest fish, but they don't get much bigger than this. This is a striped, uh, I think a sergeant fish. It's a reef fish. It's delicious. Uh, you don't eat the blood, so you don't get the, the poisoning. Uh, as long as you don't eat the blood and you cook it good, you're solid, and this is a uh, you know a tiny little fish. It's not that big. It's gonna be a little fillet, but hey, it's a big knife. So why not try to small you know small fish with a big knife? That's even more challenging. And these are delicious. Like I said, they don't get much bigger than this. Let's see how the vengeful one guts a fish. I'm going to be smart about this and use a lanyard to control the blade. Like that, and let's see how she does. Ooh. There we go. Just can't eat the blood. Just cannot eat the blood. That's uh, one thing you just can't do. There you go, got the head off. Put this over here, make sure. Don't make fun of my small filet. It's worth it. It was good. Like I said, they don't get much bigger than this. Okay. Hot. Hot, hot. Just getting some light here. Okay, I definitely approve of this knife. Jungle approved. Okay. I want to thank Chris at Prepared Mind 101 for sending it to me to review. I think it's definitely worth the $150 that this knife uh, cost to start and different handle material. You can get a bunch from Bark River. Awesome knife, made in America. 3V steel, ladies and gentlemen. Holds an edge, Whoa, razor sharp. I haven't sharpened it and I've been using it for a couple weeks. Let's see if it shaves. Oh yeah, yeah, keeps that razor edge, oh yeah. So that's all we got for today, you know, thanks for everybody that picked one up. You will not, listen to me, you will not be disappointed. There has not been a single person that has one that doesn't absolutely freaking love it. Love it, no big wonky handle this time. It does what it needs to do. Uh, and because some people ask, I don't always put the Wilson tape on it. Usually I don't, but in the winter, you know, I'm going to be wearing gloves. So that's when I end up putting like the Wilson wrap on, at least on the back end, you know, for doing the heavy chopping. And when it's, when it's spring, summer, uh, I take all that off. You don't really need it. So links down below, be back with another video here soon. So see you then.